take a look at GCA uh, worksheet number nine. This is more about angles. Um, to this point, we have worked with central angles and we learned that the arc angle here will equal the central angle here. Arc angle equals central angle. And so this little subtended arc here will match this value. In the inscribed world, we learned that uh, it was a relationship where if this was our arc angle was x, then the inscribed angle was exactly half that size. So these are the two angle types that we've learned so far. There are more angles ahead. And these are all as much fun as the last group. The first group I'll talk about is called the internal angles. These are angles that are formed in the interior of the circle, uh, in this case by two chords. So there are four of them here, you can see them, but, but maybe we'll talk about this vertical pair here. There of course is a vertical pair here as well, but for now I'll just focus on these two. Now, it looks a little bit like a guy with a mask, I don't know why, but I always see that when I look at this. But I'm not actually going to get into the physical um, proof of this. Uh, those are fun and there's some time for that, but not right here. Um, but basically what we learned to find this angle in here, we'll call it angle one, and uh, this of course would also be angle one. Um, there are two arcs that are involved in this little situation, this arc over here and here. And they are not necessarily and often not the same values. And so um, what we do here to obtain it, uh, some students say, oh, it's, it's B. Well, it's not to the center, so no, it isn't the same. Some say, well, it's A. It's not to the center, so that doesn't work either. But what it is is the average of those two arcs. So if you took the arc value A and you added it to the arc value B and divided by 2, you would get the measure of angle 1. So just to give us like a, an actual example, let's say, um, you know, this was uh, 50 and this was 30 here. We would take 50 and add it to 30 and divide by 2. Now 80 divided by 2 is 40. So this angle in here is 40 and of course so would this. I love this that it's the average. It's a very nice little relationship of averaging those two. Now again there's a beautiful little proof where using some inscribed angles and exterior angle theorem and a few things you pull this off. But at this stage we're just going to deliver the goods. In this one, uh, the external angle is found out here in the exterior. This is made up of, if these were extended, secant. So you got a secant, uh, again, if these were lines, not segments, and, and if this was a line, not a segment, you'd have two secants, and they form not in the interior, but in the exterior. Now, its relationship is very much like the last, but it isn't the average of the two of them. There are two arcs, this big one in the back, we'll call it A, this, big, this littler one in the front, we'll call it B. Now it isn't the average because we're not in between them, you can think of it that way. But it is the difference, it's the difference divided by 2 equals the measure of angle 1, if we put angle 1 out here. So in this case we take the larger arc the big back arc, subtract the front arc, and divide by 2 to get the angle of angle 1. So let's say this was 140 out here, let's say this was 30 in here. We would do 140 subtract 30 divided by 2. Now that's 110 divided by 2, so we have a 55 degree angle in that location there simple like that. Now again, uh, I feel a little guilty that I'm not doing the proof here. We'll see maybe if I do, uh, if I feel guilty enough to do it, but maybe that's another video. Here we're cutting straight to the relationships. Now this one's also quite cool. You have a secant and a tangent uh, that form an angle, and that angle is down here. 
Now that angle kind of to me is a little bit like an inscribed angle because its vertex is on the uh, on the circle, but it's definitely different because of the tangent line there. Now the cool thing is an arc is cut by the tangent and that secant, and that arc is a very important one to that tangent secant angle. And the relationship is just simply this: if that arc is a a divided by 2 equals the measure of angle 1, which is right in here. So it actually has the same relationship as the inscribed, and so I, I kind of use them in my mind to kind of think of them, they're kind of the same in terms of their relationships. Um, let me just think here if there's anything that's uh, a little bit too tricky here. Um, let's just do maybe uh, one or two of these just to show you. Um, show you some variants to this. How about if two chords cross and let's say they tell you that this is 50 over here. Let's say that this is 45 in here and they would like to know the arc size. Now notice um, it is a little different because we're not actually solving for that interior angle that was given. But you would use the same relationship that this arc uh, angle plus this arc angle divided by 2 is the value in the interior there. And if I multiply both sides by 2 I can quickly solve the problem and this becomes 40. Now with a little bit of thought I could have figured that out because 45 has to be exactly in the middle of the two and so it had to be 40 because that's the average of those. That same little uh, situation happens in this kind of diagram. So let's say that we know that this is 80 here. Let's say it's 40 out here, and we want to know what the big back arc is. Again, I would say the big arc in the back minus the one in the front divided by 2 equals 40. So I multiply 2 by both sides. I get x minus 80 equals 80. 80 equals 160. Let's see if that makes sense. 160 minus 80 is 80. 80 divided by 2 is ding, 40. I don't know. I think they're mostly kind of like that. Uh, they do get more interesting than that, but that will definitely get you the gist of this lesson. Good luck.